Closed captioning for Nice Fish is brought to you by NFMG Productions. Web, communications, and video on time and on budget. Hey, this is a nice oh, fish. Nice. This, is yeah. a fish. this is a big yeah. fish. This is a big fish. Oh, good. I thought it was. Any size to it? Yeah, it's about a 30 pounder deer, maybe oh, 40. Okay. Hey, there you go. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's a nice fish. Oh, oh that's a big fish. It's a nice oh, fish. Please, Jesus, let me get him on the boat. Oh! oh. oh. Good! At low tide, there's really great razor clams, and you can go crabbing in the summer times. And there's, yeah, it's really fun. And of course, this is what we came for right here. Dixon Entrance, the northern Haida Gwaii. This is the northern part of the island, and some of the best fishing in the world is right out there. And uh, that's where we're gonna go now. I'm excited. Join me. I want you to meet my better half. This is Andrea. Hi, and everyone. Every once in a while, every year, I like to bring her up fishing. Right? You always like to go to a nice place. I do. And of course, uh, there's certain people you like to fish with as well. Yeah, our good and friend Anne and yourself. And no, we're talking about. Oh, I'm Danny. Danny! <laughs> Way to go! I'm back, baby! You got the little lady onto a fish. Yeah, Danny's a that great a, guide. That's that, that a boy. So, where are we fishing? We're fishing up in the Queen Charlotte Islands, up here in the northern Haida Gwaii, just out of Masset Inlet, probably a 20 minute run from uh, Escott Sports Fishing Lodge. And uh, that's where I decided to bring my wife this year. Oh, he got oh, it. Oh, keep reeling, keep reeling. No, keep reeling, keep he's reeling. He's still there. He's still there. Reel, reel, reel. Yeah, yeah he's just he's still there. there. Reel, reel. He's still there. Yeah, don't give up until Gary and I say it's over. Good girl. We got everything out there. Keep we go. reeling. Oh, he's nice still there. Nice keep reeling. Nice, nice and calm. The That's flasher right. will pop out of the water. Yeah. And you'll think he's gone, but yeah. he's not. Okay. There you go. You got good tension on him now. And be have nice, smooth tension on him, dear. Yeah. yeah Oh, hey, this is a nice oh, fish. Nice. This is a fish. This is a big yeah. fish. This is a big fish. Oh, good. I thought it was. Yeah, that was a big fish. The more you can keep the flasher out of the water, the better. Okay. That's right. You're doing great, though. Look at this fish. Lou, oh. that's a big fish. It's a nice oh, fish. Oh, please, Jesus, let me get him on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, look at the size of this baby. Now, remember, he's probably not ready to come in at all. Okay. He's going to take off in a second here. Now he's going down, you nice. see. Nice. That's what a big fish does. He's, he's what they call Ow. sounding now. Before he was pulling out, now that fish is just wanting to pull down. There's what's happening. Do, do you have a swivel in between the? Yeah, it's okay. It's is not it? kinked up. I got two ball bearing swivels in there. It's okay. Right, right. Oh. Looks. Oh! oh. oh. Good! It's a beautiful fish. Yeah. How big do you think he was? Oh. He was maybe high 20s, 30 oh. maybe. <laughs> Darn. It's all right. I'll tell you what, one of the things that happened is when it, when, it, when the flasher popped out of the water, it jerked, right? Which yeah. was which what it does, eh? Because you got pressure yeah. on the flasher in the water. Yeah. So what I do is when it's like that, is I keep my rod down really close uh, to the water. Yeah. And then when you know it's gonna come out, 
then take it so you, you know it's coming straight out from the fish's yeah, mouth. Okay. Okay. But other than that, you folks saw the fish. It wasn't a fish story. <laughs> That's wife, fishing, though. My wife Andrea uh, played and lost a nice fish. Yes. It's yes, better it to is. have played and lost than not to have played at all. You got that right. I'll okay. get another one. Okay. <laughs> There you go. Uh, yeah, yeah. You gonna play it or am I? Huh? Want me to? Little guy. The little guy? It's a little spring. Okay, right here. I'll show you. Show us how to do I'll the flasher. I'll show you how here. to do the flasher thing. Okay. I'll, when you have a flasher on, you have to keep a lot more tension because you're trying to keep that flasher straight to the fish as much as you possibly can. Do you see? How I always keep the rod tip the very same, okay? So even when I reel down, you'll see the rod is bent. When I talk, say about the rod, talk about the rod. The, I try and keep exactly the very same bend in the rod. See, now the flash is up, then I reel quickly like this here. See? Because you see the way the flash is swinging? See, oh, lost the fish. <laughs> <laughs> Come over here. Hey, oh, you don't have to makes, feel so bad. I know, it makes me feel so Even when better. you do everything right, you still lose the odd fish. <laughs> Good, I'm glad that happened. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> me three. But still, oh, he that, ate the bait. that flasher was always straight to the fish. And even when he took off there and he spit the hook, it was still always straight to it. Now the big thing too with smaller fish, smaller fish have a tendency to roll and twist a lot more. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times with smaller fish it's even harder to keep onto a flasher than a large fish. Because, because of their, their lighter weight and they roll a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways everybody, I'm just going to back up. There's a few things I want to show you here in Masset. Danny Escott from Escott Sport Fishing allowed me to use a brand new Ford F-150 and also to um, borrow his lovely hostess, Heather Jacobson, is it? Yes. Say I got the name right. For, who's also a resident up here at Masset. And uh, what we want to do is just go for a little tour. So this is the gateway to all the fishing grounds on the northern Haida Gwaii. We have the town of Masset where we're at, and this is uh, Masset Inlet. And all the boats will head out, and they'll head out uh, heading north, and go out and fish such famous places as Seven Mile, the Green Can, and uh, then go, uh, you know, and carry on to a lot of other great fishing water. As well as there's these carvings that you can really enjoy. They're all free. To look at and to touch, and uh, and to marvel at their art because the uh, Haida people are real true artisans. And I'm going to show you some of that art as well right now. So follow me. Believe me when I say I'm, I'm not an authority on poles, even though I have one in my house. I have a Haida pole in my house in my uh, living room. But uh, from what I know is this is one piece of yellow cedar. That is a very expensive piece of wood. The difference between Haida art and other native art is how they'll mix their totems together. See how, how, they, how they, a lot of times you'll see, you see how the frog mm -hmm. is in with the, with the bear. And you come up here, you see the blue and the, the yellow, and you, and you see there's the eagles on the side, and then there's the shield in the middle. Mm -hmm. See that? Mm -hmm. And the three guardians up there. See the three guardians up there? A lot of that is really exclusive to, uh, you know, to hide art, from what I've been told. But that is a beautiful pole. This is a brand new pole. Now, this is a modern war canoe, and it's all in fiberglass. Now, it's got a lot of the hider art on it, but this is what they look like. But at one time, they would carve them like this here. This is, one, this is one piece of cedar. You can see how they're starting to build the hull that way. 
And then you'd turn it over and then they would, you know, root it all out. This would be how they carved it. So this is what their longhouses looked like. And their longhouses is where they partied and they celebrated. And their celebrations were usually in honor of, uh, of a union or in honor of uh, a person becoming a man or lots of different reasons. And they called them potlatches. And everyone brought a gift and uh, they're very special events. And in the old days, the potlatch was like you going to a movie, going to a theater as well. They would take bull kelp and there would be pull, bull kelp and, and they'd go underneath, uh, underneath and they would blow smoke through the bull, bull kelp, you know, to give an effect. They were banned in, uh, in Canada for many years because uh, of religious reasons. They felt that, that uh, they were doing satanic practices. Really? And in, in, in you go down south, when a man went into the woods to become a man and spent so much time when he came back, a lot of times he'd be dressed as an animal. And they, I think they called them hamaskins or something like that. And they would have all their bowels on them and that, and they would come in and they would be dancing and they would, they would, and they would attack the audience. And when the priests saw this, they thought that there's possibly cannibalism happening. And so they took the traditions away from the native people and taking those traditions away and also taking those people and putting them into public schools and try to t have them become Christians was probably one of the worst things to ever happen to the native populations as, you know, in Canada. And now, of course, they're going back to their roots, they're going back to their traditions, they're going back to their art, they're going back to their carving, they're going back to their languages, they're going back to their um, potlatches and they're fighting their identity again which is really great, right? Okay, let's go fishing. Oh, that's a nice, no, it's a nice fish. It's a nice fish. He just hasn't started yet. He's just swimming with you. This is a, this is a beauty. He's just swimming. Look at the way he's swimming here. See, look, you can see him flashing out there. Is this not a flasher? No, no, that's just a fish flashing. Oh, good. He's going to go now. There he goes. He just saw the boat. Oh, I just got knuckle busted. So you had a good night's sleep last night, dear? I had a great night's sleep. Now, hey, what did you think of that uh, halibut dinner? It was delicious. I've it never seen halibut weird. cook like that. No, he just had sure cooked did. it to a turn, didn't he? Not overly cooked. No. I think most people, what they always do is they overcook their halibut. Yeah. And then uh, it, uh, it gets tough and dry. All the meals that Adam's put out, those have been fabulous. Yeah, I know. What a gifted man. Wow, well, that's what to you food. used to say about me when you first met me. <laughs> you shouldn't that's say true. that anymore. <laughs> there you oh, go. Oh, there he goes. Oh. <laughs> Rod down. Just try and put There you go. He's right there. there. He's right there. Good job. Don't try and pull them into the kicker, though. Yeah, a fish, it's amazing how you can lead a fish around. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly. It's tough to teach people that right off the jump, yeah. though. It's, it's a difficult thing to, to learn, but you can. Okay, You're right. You can it. lead fish to where you want them. Bring yeah. them in. No, reel in, reel real to your beat a bit more. So he's not having to reel. He's, he's going to run. That's right. Okay, next, no, hold on. No, he's, gonna, he's, he's in the net. net. He's in the net. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Good job. My, my jinx is yeah, broken. Yeah, after yesterday, we seen him close to the net, and we were like, we're getting him in there, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So see, Let's look at that. Yeah, that's a nice fish. What's, you know, up a good fight. Now we're up here, this is the first week in June. A lot of the lodges aren't open yet. Um, but Danny is, and the reason he is, is because he knows how spectacular the fishing can be here in June especially early June. And the reason being is a lot of these fish are Skeena River fish and Nass River fish. And if you were fishing the Skeena River, you'll notice that all the fish are going up in June. And they come across the most of the Charlottes here uh, to, um, you know, heading toward their, their native rivers. So this is what you do over here, is you boast to the boat. There you go. <laughs> 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 okay.
She's got three open signs. Oh, hi. hi. I've been in here, I, I don't know how many times I've come in. I don't know how many pieces of jewelry I've purchased, but uh, I'm always amazed with the Haida art. And the Haida, I find the Haida art quite different from uh, like the West Coast Salish art or you know any of the Southern art. They combine the creatures together where a lot of yeah, other native art, they, they keep all the creatures separated. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and so when you're, if you're looking for the Haida art, then you'll notice that. And, and there's something about the colors too. Well, they use less colors here. They do. Than other areas. They just use four basic colors mostly on their Which their would artwork. be blue. Red and um, black and white and kind of a coppery green. Coppery green, green yeah, yeah. That yeah. they use on the frogs and things yeah. like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now this was something that blew me away here is, uh, is their weaving. Yes, they're very good at the weaving. Yeah, can I take this hat down here? And this is how valuable this hat is. Take a guess at what the price of that hat is. Okay, you got it in your mind what it is? $1,600. But it is. It's made from? Um, cedar bark. Cedar bark? They take the outside bark off and then they take the inner bark and then they split it mm -hmm. and then they split it into fine little strips to weave and then they have to soak it before they weave it so it's yeah. wet when they're weaving it yeah. and then after they've woven it then you get to wear it, it dries and then you get to wear it. This is probably a, a labor of two or three or four weeks of weaving. Wow. Uh, $1,600, I'll tell you, I'd only be going to a, the fine dances with that. Yes, exactly. Right? That's, your, that's your uptown hat. <laughs> that's my uptown hat. <laughs> that's beautiful. <laughs> but, but, but now this is, this, this, we have hats like this, but then this is their more traditional hat here, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, this is the, and this one isn't as fine. The weaving isn't as fine, but that's I'm their that cedar bark. Yeah. And that's their more traditional. That's what they would have worn back in the day. Yeah. May I take this paddle down? Yeah. Hmm? This is a real paddle. Crazy one, and it's got a lovely dogfish design on it. Okay, so that's the. Is that the dogfish there? Yep. And that's his mouth. Okay. Sometimes it takes a little bit to learn all the different. Uh, this is gill slits. Okay. These are the sepia that they have on their little forehead. Yeah. Feel the weight of that. That's a. I mean, you're not going to put this in your boat. But you know, to to paddle around, but but you would hang that up on your wall. Absolutely gorgeous, and I love the jewelry. This is a salmon egg. That's uh, why I thought you'd like that one. Uh, yeah, I like the salmon <laughs> egg. Yeah, look at that. Look at all the mother of pearl inlaid, and that's all done by hand. They're all. Yeah, this one's what they call repose, pounded out from behind. And that one's repose. I mean, that is that's gold, and that's a real fine piece of jewelry. And you can see in the once again in the inlay in the eyes, you got the mother of pearl, and um, that's thirty five hundred dollars. But you know something, that's thirty five hundred dollars. But when you have that, you're the only person who has it. Exactly. You know that's yeah. a, that is a one of a kind. It's a piece of art. It's not it's not a piece of jewelry. It's a piece of art. This is argillite. There's a quarry. It's one of the only quarries in the world. The high to go up and they and, and it's not something they can drive to. That's something I believe that they have to hike they into. They have to hike in and they, they quarry it out um, with wedges and sledges. Yeah. And then they cut it up with hand saws. Yeah. And pack it out on their backs. Pack it out on their back and then they and then they carve it. And they're, and they're the only people that are allowed in there to, uh, to do it. It's their quarry. It's their land, their quarry. And uh, of course, that's what you end up as you get this art. And this art goes back centuries too, isn't it, uh, with the argillite. So that's what you got to do. When you're up in the Charlottes and you come up to Masset, is you just don't go fishing. You gotta check out some really neat places. Thank you very much, sweetie. You're very welcome. Nice Great to see you again. Great, yeah. Any size to it? Yeah, it's about a 30 pounder deer, maybe oh, 40. Okay. Could be 50. <laughs> Do you want me to play it? <laughs> huh? Do you want me to play it? Well, I think you've had a pretty good day. Is this the one with the flasher on it? Yeah. I think you've had a pretty good day today, dear. Yeah, what's your point? Well, we're out here in what they call a tidal chop. The, uh, 
The tide is moving against the wind a little bit. It's not blowing that much. And it creates this real chop. So we're going up and down in the ch tidal chop with this nice breeze blowing through our hair underneath my hat. And uh, nice Pacific salmon on my rod. And uh, what more could you ask for? Still out there quite a ways, but he's coming in. The flasher out of the water there. Not much being said now, is there? Hey, Danny. Hey. What do we, we got, got here? What do we got? There we go. There he is. Not that big of a Chinook. We're going to let him go as well. You get a lot of these Chinooks are like big jacks, eh? And they're two-year-old fish. And a lot of them are mature fish, too. But when, uh, in a river, what usually happens are the jacks come in first. And they're the two-year-old males. And that's what the jack looks like right there. And we're just going to use that gaff to take the hook out of the fish. And if you just lean over here, you can see how he does that. You can see, he, he takes the gaff around the hook and turns the hook up and the fish swims away. That's how it's done in the North Pacific. Queen Charlotte's. It's the only, you know, but this isn't normal. Because I'm with Danny Escott. And things aren't normal. No, they're, it gets a little special out here. Yeah, well the reason being is usually the fish are a lot bigger than that with you. There's bigger things to come later today. Yeah, see I like his attitude. Right? That's what the whole secret is, is attitude. And um, of course Danny from Escott uh, sport fishing up here in Masset in the northern Hadaguay knows what we're talking about, and that is that luck is an attitude. Thank you for your support of Nice Fish. Hotspot flashes and apex lures, often imitated, never duplicated. Ask your dealer about the new colors available for this year. Ace Line Hauler, efficient and easy to use high quality crab and prawn trap pullers. Check out the new Brutus Plus 40 that will pull 100 pounds at speeds of up to 140 feet per minute. Delta Vancouver Airport Hotel, experts in the sport fishing industry for close to 40 years and sea power marine center servicing and supplying all your boating needs for the marine enthusiasts for more information check out our website at nicefish.tv